Pastor Bill Emmons here, Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International. And uh, I'm removing that so I can set up the next song. So uh, bear with me for a minute and uh, we'll get that set up and then I'll have something to share with you. And um, let me see. There we go. Okay. We're ready for the next one. All right, praise God. Well, it's good to have you with us this morning. And uh, <clears throat> I will say, this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Uh, this is our Sunday morning service, Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International, as I stated. And um, as our Sunday morning service, now most of you know I've been a pastor for over 50 years. And um, I started really young. <laughs> But um, this, is, this is our 
ministry right now when God spoke to us to move back here from California, where I had lived all my life up to that point. In 2021, the Lord spoke to us to move back here to the Tulsa area. And my questioning, like anybody probably would question, Lord, what am I supposed to do? I've been pastoring uh, for over 50 years. I pastored one church and, uh, you know, nobody knows me back there in Tulsa. And, and uh, well, maybe one or two people did, but that's about it. And I said, Lord, what am I supposed to do? And he led me back to what we'd been doing for 10 years, which was online ministry. And uh, we had been live streaming our Sunday morning services for that period of time, which is an interesting, interesting story. <laughs> I hope it'll bless you. Uh, our oldest son in Australia, um, he was doing live streaming. And uh, this was back when most preachers were not doing live stream, streaming. And um, I saw him doing that, and, and I called him. I said, how do you do that? And he told me how to do it with nothing more than an iPhone, which I happen to have. <laughs> and uh, so we started live streaming with an iPhone. And, uh, of course, as time went on, we, we worked at getting more equipment, better equipment. We now have some really good cameras, and, um, you know, God's provided and blessed. And so uh, we went from... By the time um, COVID hit, we were live streaming to 50 to 75 people per week, which we thought was pretty good. Uh, but we we're only doing our Sunday morning service. Well, now we're doing three services, live streaming. We got our Sunday morning service, our Tuesday night Bible study, and then our Thursday afternoon exhortation, which is about 20 minutes. And uh, we went from 50 to 75 people. When we moved back here, it started going, growing. And uh, we, uh, there, there's a high point we've reached, which I don't know exactly where we're at in relation to it right now. We did go over 50,000 views per week, at least one week that I'm aware of. And then we were hovering right around the 40,000 views or households per week. So our, our ministry impact has multiplied many times over. Uh, since we started doing this and the Lord told me that we were to function as an online church because there's a lot of people online that aren't going to church and they need good teaching and they need ministry and we provide that. So welcome. <laughs> good to have you with us. Um, we're going to go ahead before we go into any other things. We're going to uh, worship the Lord for a few minutes here. got a couple songs that I believe will bless you. And the next one, the title is, Oh, Praise His Name. And I believe it's going to bless you and encourage you. So join with us in worship. Uh, don't be, you know, one of those people that kind of, you know, uh, you watch, you're an observer. Be a participator. I used to tell people in my congregation, you know, get involved in worship. This is what prepares you to hear what God is going to say to you. It prepares you to receive the word and for the Holy Spirit to begin to minister. It gets you focused and tuned in, so to speak. So I say the same thing here online. Uh, get involved. Worship with us, uh, even though you're not going to see us, you know, personally uh, in the studio here. Uh, join with us anyway, because the worship music and the video that you're going to see is worship, and that's what people are doing. So join with us as, as we begin to worship the Lord this morning. Get the volume up. Thank you. 
praise to the Lord. Well, like I said, praise the name of the Lord our God. Praise his name forever. Sorry for that glitch on the transition there. Uh, <laughs> praise his name forever because he's worthy of our praise. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, sometimes these songs um, uh, fool me a little bit because I forget what the length of the song is. <laughs> I may uh, uh, make a mistake and not turn it, uh, switch it when I should. Anyway, that's what happens when you do uh, everything yourself. And <clears throat> I'm telling you, God's sending us an, uh, an assistant that has the ability to do all this stuff. And we're going we're gonna to get that, praise God. All right, uh, the next song, the mention of his name, I've got a, I've got a light right in my eyes here, so it's a bit of a challenge trying to find the right one and get it ready and and uh, <clears throat> so, but I will get it. All right, make sure the volume is up. There we go. All right, now this one is um, the mention of your name. Now I want to explain something to you between the difference between um, praise and worship. Praise is, uh, you know, it's it's primarily talking about God, about the Lord, about the things of God. Worship is talking to God, talking to the Lord, and uh, and giving Him direct praise, direct worship, not just talking about it. And too many times we get that confused with with other aspects of um, what we've called worship. And the fact is, if we're not praising the Lord and praising our Father directly, personally, you know, it's it's gotta it's gotta be. Uh, I say one on one, even though you may be in a building with a thousand people, it's still got to be something that is just you and God or you and the Lord. And uh, you need to understand that, that there is a difference between praise and worship. And uh, as we uh, uh, prepare our music for the Sunday morning service, those are one of the things that we look at. What song <clears throat> can we start out with that is a song of praise? And then how do we transition over into a song of worship? And uh, so I think you'll see uh, the difference in the two songs, one was Oh Praise His Name, second one is titled uh, at the, the Mention of Your Name. And I think you'll see the difference between what praise is in that last song versus worship in this song. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. I think. <laughs> Here we go.
Praise God. At the mention of your name. Now there's, um, actually there's a, that song is longer, but uh, that's live worship. And right in the middle of it, um, they, uh, as you heard that things slow down and, and uh, you know, a lot of times ministry will take place in the middle of a song. And, uh, you know, we want to always allow that to happen. But at the same time, being on a time frame that we we're working with, uh, we have to adjust our, our music to, to fit that. <laughs> so anyway, praise God. I, I trust those songs minister to you. Oh, the name of Jesus and at the mention of your name. And uh, it's, you think, well, how can I, if we don't have a half hour, and I'll go back when we started our church back in 1977, we actually started the church and um, our worship would last an hour easily. And we had, and I mean, we were packing out the house and, uh, you know, just uh, great worship. We had our band, our, our musicians. I hate to call them a band, but it's a band of musicians. <laughs> you can say it that way. And our worship leaders. And um, we would go for an hour. And um, then whenever we'd have guest speakers, you know, this is the way we normally operated. I started getting guest speakers saying, can we cut the, the worship part down a little bit and uh, then I can have time to minister without being too long for a service with a guest speaker. And we did that. But uh, over time, we realized it doesn't take an hour to move, step into the presence of God. It doesn't take an hour of singing songs and, and music and, and, you know, what we call worship. Uh, one song couldn't do it. And uh, I think we just, one of our, I think our computer just turned off. Anyway, uh, one song can do it if you really put yourself into the song uh, and allow the Spirit of God to minister to you through that. Uh, two songs uh, can do it, three songs. Uh, and there's not a specific uh, amount of songs that, you know, well, if, at this point, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to begin to minister or whatever it might be. So I just wanted to, you know, encourage you on these things. Uh, one song, two song, three song, uh, that's not uh, an issue. And um, we just do what we believe the Holy Spirit's given us to do. Amen. So, uh, I uh, want to announce a couple of things, but I want to get our uh, Instagram family on. And uh, so we're going to start the Instagram feed right now. So bear with us for a minute because they're we're they're limited. On. Yes. They're on. They're on already? When did you turn them on? I left the music. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Okay. Well, welcome Instagram family, as well as our CFC um, uh, uh, Facebook family. And then all of you that are watching through some other means, uh, welcome. We've, we've got one of our partners that uh, doesn't get to watch the live program or listen to the live program, and they get a CD to listen to the program uh, from the, the past Sunday. Uh, it's, these are all different means of being able to minister to you uh, on, a, on an as personal a level as we're able to do. Uh, so take advantage of that and, and use these. <clears throat> I don't care if you're, if you're listening uh, on, you know, some, some um, uh, you know, phone or a tablet or smart TV or watching or on a CD or a DVD. Uh, get into it. You know, put yourself into it and worship with us. And when we begin to minister the word, uh, take notes because if you take notes, you're going to be more likely to remember what you heard uh, than if you just sit and listen. And uh, I know sometimes I, when I'm at a meeting and the guest speaker is moving pretty fast, I can only get an occasional note. And, and then I have to get the CD or the DVD and I can go back and study it myself. But um, take advantage of, of the tools that God has given us to, uh, for us on the, on the side of ministry to minister to you, and then on your side, receiving. Use the tools that God made available to you. Amen. Well, it's good to have you with us this morning. And uh, I saw somebody uh, was on briefly and then uh, got off. Uh, people come and go sometimes. 
But I want to encourage you, if, if this is your first time, or maybe you've been watching all along, uh, commit yourself to staying with us for the whole program. The reason for that is there's a lot of things the Holy Spirit's going to bring up, whether it's in the teaching of the Word, uh, even in the announcements. Uh, there can be an anointing on the announcements. And I'll give you an example. <laughs> uh, the, the Southwest Believers Convention uh, begins a week from tomorrow. And they start out, I believe it's 9 o'clock on that Monday morning, the 29th. And it runs through Saturday night. Uh, if you are able to attend the Southwest Believers Convention, I encourage you to do that. If you can't attend, you can uh, be in it in the sense that you can go to the Victory Channel. And on the Victory Channel, you can actually uh, participate in the, the, all the meetings uh, of the convention. And uh, they get a lot of speakers this year. Uh, they usually have two speakers in the morning, two speakers in the afternoon, and then the featured speaker at night. And uh, that's Monday through Friday. And then uh, on Saturday, they usually have uh, um, the, this, uh, the uh, healing school in the morning. And then in the evening, they have uh, uh, kind of a wrap it up, worship, praise, uh, prayer, whatever needs to be done to wrap up the week. So I encourage you to attend if you can possibly do that. Now, if you're, in a, if you're not near Fort Worth, because that's where it is, Fort Worth, Texas, there are believers' conventions that they conduct uh, in other cities, and you can go to their website, kcn.org, and uh, you can look at their schedule and see if there's a convention that will be near you. Uh, we always, uh, in California, we always attended the, South, uh, or the um, West Coast Believers' Convention, and then occasionally we've had the opportunity to attend the Southwest Believers Convention. And, uh, you know, <laughs> when we can't go, I really miss it. Both of us, Pastor Mary and myself, we really miss it. But what we do, if we can't go, we do exactly what I said for you to do. Uh, we turn on our TV and we flip it over to uh, the Victory Channel. And uh, then we, we are in live. Uh, in the convention, we, we we try to make it like we're at the convention. Turn the lights down low, turn the air conditioning on so it's nice and cool. <laughs> you know, we don't walk around the house doing other things while the meetings are going on. We participate because that's when you're going to get the most out of it if you participate. So I encourage you to do that. Um, there's there's uh, some of you, uh, I'm sure you all heard about the attempt on... Um, uh, President Trump, the assassination attempt, we need to come against that. And uh, there's other things that we have heard now. And sometimes we hear things through people maybe we're not as familiar with, prophetic things. And uh, the, then what we do is we take it and pray about it and ask the Lord, you know, what's going on. Um, there have been attempts uh, in the past recent time, uh, in various groups in this country, in politics, in, in finance, uh, in medicine, uh, to uh, bring down our country, to literally destroy uh, what God has given us as a free Christian nation. Now, I know there are people that have said, well, the United States is not a Christian country. Yes, it is. We were established upon biblical principles, upon our faith in Jesus Christ and Almighty God. And if you go back and read, in fact, I've got, um, I think I've got the book here. Let me see if I can see it on my close-up. Uh, I don't see it right off the bat. Oh, yeah, Democracy in America. Um, I've got this book. Now, this is an interesting one. Alex de Tocqueville, Tocqueville, I don't know how to say it. It's French, I think. Um, and this Democracy in America, just one of the books I've got on this country, our founding fathers, uh, what they believed. I've got another one that's bigger than that. I don't see it right off hand. Uh, I'm skimming fast. So, uh, oh, the Federalist Papers. Um, I'll, let me grab that just to show you what I'm talking about. 
Federalist Papers, that's this one. And um, if you want to know about the foundation, the roots of our country, uh, those books will be really good because what they do is they tell you uh, about the, the, the reasoning, the purpose the, the, uh, for breaking away from uh, England, the United Kingdom and becoming an independent nation. Why did people come here in the beginning? Uh, primarily, the primary reason people came to this country was for religious freedom. And then once we established a government, they also came for the political freedom that we have in this country, uh, you know, where you could uh, voice your opinion and not go to jail or be beheaded or something of that nature. Uh, although some of, you know, they've tried to, they, there have been political movements where they've tried to limit our freedom of speech. And we always got to take things back to uh, the founding fathers and what God did and how this country was established and the, the, the belief system, the faith of the, of the founding fathers, which was always in God. And they would pray before every session of, of, uh, the Continental Congress, and later on regular Congress, they would pray before each session to get God's wisdom, to find, to, to decide how to do things, what laws to make, and so forth. And I'm just sharing this to encourage you, uh, because we have had assaults against our republic. Now, when people talk about, oh, you know, democracy, 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 well, democracy alone is nothing more than mob rule. The, the majority rules, and uh, but that eliminates the voice of the minority, and I don't mean that in a racial sense. I mean people that have a different opinion. Uh, the good thing about being a republic, republic is based on uh, first of all our constitution, uh, and the, the it's the law of the land, our bill of rights, and that's where it that's where it starts from. But it came originally from the Bible, biblical principles. So I want to encourage you on that. Uh, getting back to President Trump and the assassination attempt, you know, we've been praying for President Trump, and I believe it was nothing short of the hand of God uh, moving that bullet, moving his head uh, at a certain moment for that bullet to, uh, to do no more than it did. Uh, but I've looked at the videos in this past week uh, that people have taken with their camera phones and the ones with regular cameras, the TV cameras and so forth. I've looked at a lot of videos and I see things that we're not, uh, you know, the government is not telling us about. Uh, and I just want you to be aware there's a lot of inf information now online. You can go on YouTube and find multitude of videos, but it appears that there were more than one shooter that possibly it was a setup and the young man that they claim was the assassin uh, was the distraction. And um, if you look at the videos and you see the water tower on the shadow side of the water, top of the water tower, it appears there's a person up there and they say there were no police, no, no security people up there, but there was somebody there. Uh, if you listen to the uh, the recording of the gunshots. Uh, there were gunshots from three different guns, uh, and they can find they can uh, know that by the the sounds. And I don't want to get into too much detail, but by the sound recording of each shot, and so they they know there were at no less than two, and it appears what they've discovered. And I've watched the videos. I've I've seen uh, the testings they've done. Uh, it appears there were at least three people that were shooting. Um, it's a miracle that uh, President Trump survived. Um, they show you the line of sight, uh, the travel, of the trajectory of the bullets. And uh, there were bullets flying everywhere. And except for the one that hit President Trump's ear, they all went around. And it's amazing that uh, some of those people that were supposed to protect President Trump around him at that moment. Uh, it's a, I'm amazed by the trajectory of the bullets that none of them got hit. Well, that's just God protecting them too, you know. But there's just too many things that 
that tell us uh, when you look at it, you have to not want to see it to uh, think that it wasn't, that this was not some kind of organized assassination attempt. So we've decided we're going to pray for that. And we're also going to pray about something that came through prophetically about the plan uh, in the, the socialist, globalist, left, extreme leftist groups that uh, they want to crash our economy. Now, uh, George Soros, as you know, had uh, a year or two years ago, had made a commitment that he was going to crash this country and bring us down. And the economic system is one of the ways that people you know, think it could happen. Uh, so we're going to come against that. They, they talk about a prophetic word that um, talks about after President Trump is in office, getting into the first part of the year, that uh, they're going to try to crash the economy uh, and put us into the, the one of the worst things since the great, um, uh, well, what, what, what was that back in the depression. the depression? Yeah, from the Great Depression. But it would recover fairly fast. But still, you don't want to go through that. So in the name of Jesus, and you agree with me on this, I come against the uh, strategies, the plans, the weapons that the devil has tried to form through people to bring down this country, to destroy this country, to crash our economy, to assassinate our, our next president. Uh, Father, I thank you that you said what we bind is bound and what we loose is loose. So in the name of Jesus, I bind up every one of these plans, these secret plans, these strategies, these efforts to destroy this country, to stop President Trump, to stop uh, the gospel, to stop our freedoms. I break the power of these plans, these strategies. I command them to fall to the ground dead and ineffective. And I declare that the economy will not crash in the name of Jesus in 2025 or until Jesus comes. <clears throat> I declare that we will not have a presidential assass assassination in Jesus' name. I charge ministering angels to continue to garrison about President Trump and now uh, the uh, potential vice president with him, J.D. Vance. Father, I pray for divine protection upon them and uh, you at Ministering Angels, you garrison about them, protect them. Uh, anything that would try to be perpetrated against them, you step in there and block that and stop that in the name of Jesus. And uh, you Ministering Angels uh, that have been sent forth to minister to this nation in the economic realm, I charge you with putting a stop on the plans to crash our economy. Uh, and, and any other weapons we're not aware of that uh, plan strategies of the enemy that would try to harm this nation in some way. I bind them up and I command them to fall to the ground, every one of them dead and ineffective against this nation, uh, against our economy, against President Trump and uh, his vice presidential uh, pick there, uh, J.D. Vance. Father, I thank you that the weapons formed against them and against this nation will not prosper. I loose the angelic forces uh, to uh, do the job of protecting this nation, protecting President Trump and J.D. Vance, and, and bringing peace back to this country, bringing blessing back to this country, bringing prosperity back to this country, and, and everything the devil's tried to steal from us. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, Pastor Mary and I set ourselves in agreement, and those listening, I believe, will uh, you, you set yourself in agreement with us, and we declare uh, date. See, we declare scripture daily over this country, and some of the things we declare no weapon formed against this nation will prosper, no evil shall befall this nation, no plague shall come near this nation, no enemy. No plan or strategy of the devil and, and uh, humans that have evil intent toward this country. Those plans will not prosper in the name of Jesus. For if God mains, maintains the right and the cause of the righteous 
And I'm declaring, we've got millions of Christians, millions of righteous people in this country. We are not a heathen nation. So I declare that, that God blesses this nation. He said he would in the covenant made by the first uh, uh, explorers to set their feet on the sand on the East Coast way back. Uh, I, I don't even know the year uh, that it was, but they made a covenant with God that, they, that this nation would be a Christian nation and we would honor God and serve God and he would bless this country. And then uh, uh, George Washington in his prayers made a similar commitment and other presidents and leaders have done the same thing over the years. We're at a time where God is moving once again in this country. I believe we're gonna see the greatest revival that we have ever seen. I believe it's already begun, but and I believe it's growing and we're gonna see it just burst out on every side in the name of Jesus. So agree with us on these things and I call them done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, let me see if I got I think I have anything else. Let me give you the word for the week. And this is um, out of Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, verse 18, and Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 12. And it's a short declaration. And it goes this way. God delights in my prosperity. He gives me power to get wealth so that he might establish his covenant. And then I'm adding to that, everything we set our hands to shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Uh, he gives us power to get wealth. He leads us in the path that we should go. God gives us power to get wealth that he might establish his covenant. He teaches us to prosper. And uh, so uh, you go back and take these two verses, Deuteronomy 8, 18 and 11, 12, and uh, begin to confess those over yourselves, your businesses, your family, this country. Uh, we're all connected here in this. Amen. All right. So that's your uh, scripture for the week. And uh, begin to, I, I recommend that you uh, confess it uh, at least twice a day. Uh, morning when you get up, that's what I do. And then at last thing at night before you go to bed, uh, I do it that way. And then throughout the day, as it comes up in my thinking, I confess uh, the various scriptures that we use uh, over this nation, over this state now that we're in Oklahoma, uh, over the city of Tulsa and Broken Arrow and surrounding communities, and uh, right down to the smallest village uh, in this country uh, with, with you know, just a handful of representatives uh, of government there, all the way from the top to the bottom. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Uh, let's get into the word this morning. Uh, I, this is a continuing series. I, I hadn't planned that. But as it turns out, the, the specific part that I'm ministering on today, Keys to Success and Victory, this is a part three of that. But it, it, it actually is a part five of Becoming Established. And what I've been talking about is Becoming Established uh, in specific things, biblical principles, building our faith, standing on it, believing it, believing for it. And so, uh, you know, people, like I've said each time I've, I've ministered on this, uh, there's some people that will take some of the things that I share and say that that's an error, it's, it's a heresy, it's false teaching, it's self-centered, it's fleshly. But my response is, well, what does the word say? It doesn't matter whether it sounds religious or not. It doesn't matter whether it fits your doctrine or your uh, theology. What matters is what does the word say? Because ultimately that's the bottom line. And sometimes we become so theological thinking and so spiritual minded in the fleshly sense, we think we're spiritual, see, that we become legalistic and it's got to be this way and it can be no other way. And denominations, a lot of times, will get stuck in that. It, well, it's got to be our way or it's not biblical, you know. Well, that's not true. We, we should know that. All right, so uh, here's, here's where we start. Becoming established in God's, uh, in God's desire to see his children, that's you and I, grow, become successful, and flourish. And we give Ephesians 6, 10 and 11, 6 
chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, Psalm 35, verse 27, Hebrews 11, 6, Luke 12, verses 22 through 32, Psalm 34, 1, or 34, uh, verse 10, the second part of that. The, another thing we need to become established is uh, developing God's power or dunamis in our own lives. Dunamis, uh, the power of God in English, it talks about that in the terms of power. But dunamis, we get two English words out of that Greek word. Uh, one is dynamite type of power, explosive power. The other one is a generative, like a generate, generating power. And both of them are correct and used maybe in different aspects or different applications, but they're both correct. What Jesus told the disciples to do, uh, he said, go and tarry in Jerusalem, wait for the, the power, the dynamite, uh, that you'll be endued with power. And we need to have the power of God in us and operating in us and through us. All right, so we talked about that, developing God's power in us, Jude one twenty, learning how to use the sword of the Spirit to defeat every attack of the enemy against us, Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, Ephesians 6, 16. Um, doing what Jesus did, which was meditating the word, Joshua 1, 8, Romans 10, 17. Speaking to your mountains, Mark eleven twenty three, 23. When the devil attacks, answer him, resist him with the word like Jesus did, James 4, 7. Uh, we talked about becoming established in our salvation, Romans 1, 16, Romans 10, 10. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. We've talked about uh, becoming established in our forgiveness. Too many Christians do not have yet the understanding they are forgiven. <clears throat> they are cleansed from their sin and unrighteousness. And if we sin, that we have an advocate with the Father. And the Bible says that if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So um, forgiveness, Colossians 2, verses 13 and 14. Uh, we need to become established in our knowing, our standing with God. John 10, 10, Romans 8, 31 through 39. We need to become established in who we are in Christ. Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 5. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 30 and 31. Philippians 1, 6, Hebrews 7, 25. We need to become established in the promise of healing, I've heard preachers actually say there is not one promise in the Bible where God promises healing. That's somebody who either has made a decision to believe their denominational doctrine over what the Word actually says. Because the Bible does give us promises, clear promises. So 1 Peter 2.24, by stripes you were healed. Matthew 8, verses 16 and 17. We need to get established in God's promise of provision. Okay, what do you do with the scripture? My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What do you do with the Lord is my shepherd? I shall not lack. We have promises that traditional religion tries to explain away. It tells us, no, that's not scriptural. You never know what God's going to do. You can't put God in a box. No, we're not putting God in a box. We're just taking him at his word. Plain and simple. All right, so God's promise of provision, Psalm 23, verse 1. Luke 22. Oh, I didn't give the chapter. I got 22 through 32. How did, how did I miss that? Well, I'll have to go back and, and uh, get the chapter and write that down. And I think it's Luke 12, 22 through 32. You can check it out. Philippians 4.19, we have to become established in God's desire to give us the desires of our hearts. Again, I've heard preachers online uh, say, well, God never promised to give you the desires of your heart. That saying is unscriptural. The scripture tells us God did, does desire to bless you with your desires. Uh, Mark 11.24, James 4, 2-3. John 16, 23 and 24, Psalm 37, verse 4. All right, so that brings us up to date. For all of you who haven't been following, haven't been watching every week, there's a lot there for you to go back and study. Uh, you can go back on my Facebook page 
or on my YouTube channel under Pastor William or Pastor Bill Emmons. And you can get all of our programs uh, for the past, oh, two years, three years, something like that. It's like almost 500 programs there. You can catch up on this series and go back and get it from the beginning. All right, let's step into the next one. God's promise of blessings. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, verse from the Amplified Translation. Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse of the law and his condemnation by himself becoming the curse for us. For it is written uh, in the scripture, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree, uh, verse 14, so or to the end, so that through Christ Jesus, the blessings promised to Abraham might come upon the Gentiles or those people that were not heirs of the promise. So the Gentiles are people, they, it's loosely translated, Gentiles means people without God. Well, ultimately what it was, was people that were not of the descendants of Abraham. And we've, we've kind of narrowed that down to the Jews. Well, it's, it's more than the Jews. It's, there's 12 tribes. But uh, you may not know if you're one, part of one of those tribes or not. And it doesn't matter. Because the promises are to those of the physical bloodline descendants of Abraham. And then according to the New Testament, uh, those people who are heirs of the faith of Abraham. If I walk in the faith that Abraham walked in, that I have, am an heir to the promises of Abraham. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's really cool. And, and of course, then the Bible says that when God made promise to Abraham, he uh, swore an oath and he swore by himself because there was nothing greater to swear by. But what does that mean? It means he put himself on the line to guarantee to us that he would keep his promises that he made to Abraham. Well, I, I may or may not be a physical bloodline of Abraham, but I am of the faith of Abraham. And consequently, I take those promises as words spoken, spoken by God to me. That's the way you got to take the word. Amen. Amen. All right. So that we through faith might all receive the realization of the promises. What promises? That he made to Abraham. But then you get in the New Testament, God made promises to Jesus and to us through Jesus. So we get double. We don't just get only the promises of Abraham, which are great in themselves, because the, the biggest promise God made to Abraham was the eventual Messiah, the Redeemer. Well, Jesus came. He's the Messiah, the Redeemer. And, but then he established the New Covenant and fulfilled all the law of the Old Covenant and then established basically two things for the new covenant. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. He said all the law is fulfilled in those two commands. So I think it's pretty simple. We just got to love God and love people. Amen? And I don't mean in this back in the 70s, the flower power kind of love. I'm talking about with the love of God, where you will do things, go out of your way, to be a blessing to somebody and help them, help them to know God, help them in other areas of life where they need help. But the primary need for people is to know the Lord. Amen? All right. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14. These are, uh, this is probably the clear, clearest, clearest <laughs> uh, list uh, of the blessings of Abraham that you can find in the Bible. Uh, there's there's many blessings spoken about throughout the Bible, but this one kind of puts them all condensed into 14 verses. I want to read this. You say, well, that's a lot of verses to read. Well, we're in church, so we ought to be going to the Word and finding out what the Word says. So, And I'm going to read it from the King James. So Deuteronomy 28, now starting at verse 1. It shall come to pass if, now in my notes, I, I made bigger font, and bold, because I want I want to be reminded that all of God's blessings are conditional. They're conditioned upon us receiving them by faith. 
doing them by faith, acting on them by faith. All right. So, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt, number one, hearken or listen diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God. That's it. Listen to the word. Hear what the word has to say. And the second one is to observe, which means to get revelation. And number three, and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day. So that actually takes us back to Joshua 1, where God told Joshua, same thing. He tells him to meditate the word. He tells him to get the revelation. Then he tells him to act on the word with that revelation. Same thing we get in the New Testament. Even James talks about it. All right. So let's continue with the balance of that first verse. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. God expects his people, not just the Jews, but the believers as well, to be set on high above other nations. Uh, in that sense that here we are a Christian nation, we ought to be blessed above other nations. But any nation that will put God first, any nation that will uh, declare Jesus is Lord and begin to serve the Lord, serve God, uh, God will put them on high as well. It's not just to one person or one group. Verse 2, that all these blessings, now he's about ready to tell us, shall come on thee and overtake thee. I love that phrase. Not only will they come on you, they're going to overtake you. When I was in junior high school, uh, I ran track. I, I, I played sports since I was in elementary school, all the way through into college. And I was running track and happened to be at a time we lived in the same area where I have a cousin who was my age. And uh, we both were athletic and we went to the same school and we ended up running a race where we competed against each other. And uh, so when they placed us in this race, I got placed in the outermost lane. He got placed on in an inner lane. And uh, when the gun went off, I took off. And you know what? I'm out in front of everybody. I can't see them. I can't hear them. I round the first curve. I round the second curve. Go down the back straightaway. Come around the third curve. I'm still out in front. I'm thinking, I'm going to win this race. But as I start coming around that last curve, I start hearing footsteps coming up behind me. I hear somebody that's about ready to overtake me. And, um, uh, you know... <laughs> Coming, they're coming on me. They're, they're coming to me. And once they reach me and they pass me, they've overtaken me. Well, it was my cousin. <laughs> and he caught me and went running right on by me. And from that point to the finish line, I felt like I was running in mud. My legs felt heavy. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't seem to get any more speed. And I just kept feeling like I was slowing down and slowing down and slowing down. And I did place, but it was a hard fought race to, for me to place. But uh, I understand when I read that verse, I clearly understand it because of what I experienced. My cousin came on me and overtook me. And, uh, you know, when you're competing, you don't want the, the uh, opposition person or team to catch you and overtake you. You want to stay ahead all the time. I'm very competitive. You can ask my wife. I am very competitive. We, we can play any kind of game. It doesn't matter. I play to win. Uh, we play Monopoly. My family don't want to play Monopoly with me anymore. I usually come out with all the money and all the property. I play to win. When my kids were little, they, Aaron especially, our oldest daughter, she would, she would just, just break out in tears and start crying because she was losing her properties, losing her money. Mary would give her her properties and give Aaron you know, Mary would give Aaron her money. So Mary would be out of the game and she'd be helping Aaron and Aaron would lose it all. And she'd just fall over in Mary's lap and cry, you know, why? Because dad was winning the game and getting all the money and all the property. I'm competitive. I've always been that way. And I don't know this because I've got anything to prove, but to this day at my age, if it's, if it's anything competitive, I'm in to win. <laughs> so I don't like being overcome. Uh, all right, so let's, let's keep going. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee if, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken, 
or listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. How do you do that? Through his word. The primary way to hear from God is going to his word. The next way to hear from God is being spirit-filled, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you uh, with, the, with the voice or the, the message of God. And of course, the next thing uh, is having such a personal relationship that you and God are talking uh, together and, and you know, you're talking and, and you're hearing what he's got to say. All right, verse three, blessed shalt thou be in the city. People are moving out to the country nowadays, trying to get out of the city. They feel they'll be more blessed living in the country. Yet he says he'll bless you in this city and he'll bless you in the field, out in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, that's your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, however many generations that come out from you. And the fruit of your ground, uh, what you produce through your efforts. And the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thine kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. In other words, God wants to bless the work of your hands, whatever you do for a living. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. Um, in the sense that God wants to bless you. I, I've worked over the years, I've worked a lot of jobs. My wife can tell you after 53, we're in our 53rd year. <laughs> I have to look at her. 50, we're, we're in our 53rd year of marriage. And she can tell you, having been around me that long, uh, what I'm about to say, she can verify, that every job I've gone on, uh, I have been promoted and progressed to the point that I could I could go no further uh, unless I went into management or something of that nature. And and I've I've worked in you wouldn't believe the number of different jobs I've heard I've heard I've had over my lifetime. Uh, from working in steel mills to running my own business uh, in architecture, uh, in insurance, started my own little company uh, insurance business uh, after I learned the business. Uh, I mean, and I could give you a whole long list of things that I've worked in over the years and progressed in. Uh, God wants to bless the work of your hands. I've always uh, believed that and everything I've done, I've done it with the idea. I'm not going to stay where I'm at. I'm going to get promoted. I'm going to rise to the surface and, and like the cream right, rises to the surface. And I, I expect to be blessed. All right. Then he says in verse 5, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. That's provision. Okay. Uh, verse 6, uh, Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Whether I'm coming in or coming or going, I'm blessed. We have a, a, a mat. We've got to find it. We, when we moved in April, uh, we still got things we haven't found. Uh, but we've got a garage full of storage tubs that I haven't gotten through them all yet. But um, we have a, uh, what do you call that? A, 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 the mat you put in front of the doormat mm -hmm. uh, that says, I'm blessed when you when you go out of the house, says I'm blessed going out. And then on the other side, as you're coming in, you look down and says, I'm blessed coming in. I want to be reminded all the time. I'm blessed whether I'm coming or going. It says, well, let's let's continue reading. Uh, verse 7, the Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Nobody that wants to be my enemy is going to stand before me and, and stop me or hinder me. So don't ever decide to be my enemy because it's not going to be good for you. <laughs> verse 8, and, and by the way, we can confess that over our nation. You can confess that over your city. You can confess that over your, your job, your business. All right. Verse 8, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. Now that's your future, uh, you know, your investments, things of that nature, your bank accounts, uh, you know, CDs, annuities, uh, stocks and bonds, whatever it might be. God wants to bless you. But your storehouse is always also... Uh, your cupboards, uh, some of you, your closets, our storehouses, some of you, you have attics or basements. They become storehouses a lot of times. Uh, sometimes your garage becomes a storehouse. Right now ours is. Uh, your gas tank and your car. So, you know, expand your horizon, so to speak, 
of what are your storehouses and your checking account, your savings account. All these things are storehouses. All right, so God will command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. Not just your work, but in everything you set your hands to. He shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. In other words, wherever you are, God wants to bless you right there. You don't have to go somewhere else to get blessed. You can get blessed right where you're at. That doesn't mean God might not move you like he did us, but we didn't move from California to Oklahoma so we could get blessed. When We moved in obedience to the leading of the Lord. But we were blessed in California. Now we're in Oklahoma, and we're blessed in Oklahoma. And wherever we go, we expect to be blessed. See, you got to develop expectation. Once you get uh, established in these promises of blessing, and I say get established, man, you got to meditate upon it. You got to get it into it. You got to start confessing it. You get your mind renewed, all right? The renewing of the mind, uh, the, the bringing the, the, the soul, mind, will, and emotions into agreement with the word of God. Get your actions, get your words in agreement with the word of God. That's when you really start walking in blessing. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. He shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. In other words, he's going to take it personal. He's going to know you belong to him. As he has sworn unto thee, if, now that, again, here's the condition. If thou shalt keep the commandments or the word of the Lord thy God and walk in and do his ways. In other words, be a doer of the word. Meditate the word. Get insight. Get revelation as you do. Act upon it. Be a doer of the word. Verse 10. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of the earth or respect thee is really what it means. And the Lord shall make thee. Now listen to this, folks. Any of you who don't believe in the prosperity message, there is no prosperity message. It's the gospel message. The gospel is good news. And, you know, let's face it. If you can't pay your bills, good news is you, you can. You can pay your bills. Good news is I can get out of debt. Good news is if I need a car, I can afford to buy a car. If I don't have a home, I can afford to get a home. That's, that's all good news. All right. Healing is good news. All right. So the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Now that's things. So don't get all fleshly on me. Things are good, not bad. In the fruit of thy body, that happens to be your offspring. In the fruit of thy cattle, now we're getting into, you know, how you make a living. <clears throat> in the fruit of thy ground, those two are both dealing with making a living. The Lord, verse 12, shall open unto thee his good treasure. God does not have bad treasure. All he has is good treasure. The heaven to give rain unto thy land in his season. Now, living here now in Oklahoma, we, we've begun to learn something about rain. It can rain all day long. We've, we've had days where it's rained multiple days in a row. Uh, last night, we had thunderstorms pass through about four in the morning. I, I got woke up to thunder. And I could see through the uh, window shades, lightning flashes and thunder rolling. And, you know, and that went on for quite a while. But it was raining and raining hard. Because I could hear it coming down on the roof. And uh, so I thought, well, praise God for, you know, summer rain. We, we can use it through the summer. But all moderate. I, we, we put a limit on that. See, God doesn't tell us how much rain or how little rain it's that's in the natural realm, but we have, we've been given control over it and we need to start binding and loosing. We need to start speaking what God has blessed us or promised to bless us with. All right. The rain unto thy land in its season. If you live in an area where they've been having a drought, bind up that drought, take authority over it, start confessing the blessing because it belongs to you and to bless all the work of your hand. And thou shalt lend Unto many nations, thou shalt not borrow. Two things there. Uh, number one, you will be in a position financially where you can lend or help people financially. 
and you won't have to borrow. Did you know that debt is under the curse? You need to study it out in the Bible. It's under the curse. We're not supposed to be borrowing. And, and you know, if you're in debt, you need to begin to believe God on purpose to get out of debt. And when God blesses you with extra money, pay off those debts. All right. The Bible says that the borrower is servant, the borrower is servant to the lender. I, I don't want to be under somebody else's control. I don't want to be a slave to somebody else or some lender. All right. Verse 13. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou hearken unto the commandments or the word of the Lord thy God, which I command you this day to observe. Again, remember that word observe means to gain insight or revelation, and then to do them, be a doer of the word. Verse 14, thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right hand, or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Now, let me wrap this up. This is the basic key to success and victory in every area of your life. Joshua 1 a, I've, I've referenced it already. This book of the law, which is God's word. Don't get hung up on the Ten Commandments. Don't get hung up on the law. Uh, Jesus freed us from the limitations of the law. All right? The, so let's, let's put in there what the commandments really are, it's God's word. <clears throat> this book of, of, let's say it this way, this book of God's word shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate, or uh, the word meditate is, deals with speaking, so you're going to declare what God says day and night, so that you may observe or gain insight and revelation, and then do according to what's written in, in the word. Now, there's another aspect of that. When God speaks to you to do something and you, you get it confirmed, you go to the Word, find out that there's scriptural basis for it, that's also the Word God speaks to us by His, His Word speaking through our spirit or sometimes through a prophetic Word, maybe through someone else. But I don't just jump and run and act on those things until I've confirmed it with God through His Word and through prayer. When you've got the written word, it's already confirmed. <laughs> you don't have to try and confirm it. It's right there in front of you. All right. So when you do that, you meditate the word of God, you get the insight and revelation, then you act on it. Then he says, you shall, make, you shall make your way prosperous. You will deal wisely, one translation says, in the affairs of life. And you shall have good success. When? When you are, have meditated gotten insight and revelation to that word, and then begun to act on it. Then you are the one that makes your way prosperous, that deals wisely, that has good success. <clears throat> James 1.22 from the Amplified Translation says, But be ye doers of the word, obey the message, not merely listeners to it, betraying or deceiving yourselves. And, the, and here it says in the Amplified, into deception by reasoning, contrary to the truth. How many times have we reasoned ourselves out of the blessing of God? Well, does God really want me to have this? Am I sure this is God's will? And there's always the devil right there talking in your ear, trying to tell you when God wants, when, when God wants to bless you and, and, and it starts happening a little bit, the devil starts talking to you about, no, 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 that's carnal. You don't need this. You don't need that. You don't need a new house. You don't need a new car. You don't need nice clothes. You know, just an old beat up, car will do. If it gets you from point A to point B, that's all that matters. Well, you know, that's not much of a testimony. <laughs> all right. So betraying or deceiving yourself by reasoning contrary to the truth. Anytime you begin to reason that's contradictory to what God's promises and God's blessings say, you are hindering yourself and you're deceiving yourself. You got to get rid of those thoughts and words. Start talking the word. I want you to remember that Psalm 35 verse 27, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yet, yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, which means worker or worshiper. God, if you're a worshiper of God, God wants to prosper you. So all these people talking against prosperity, throw that out. This is what the word says. 
Amen. All right. Next week, we're going to be talking a little bit about becoming established in the word itself. If that's the way the Holy Spirit leads. That's my plan. We'll see how the Holy Spirit leads. Father, I pray for those watching right now, listening right now, whether they're listening, watching live or, or after the fact. Father, I pray for healing for every person hearing this message. I pray for abundant provision, Father. Holy Spirit, I ask you to take the message they've heard this morning and give them insight, give them revelation in their own heart and motivate them to begin to meditate and act upon the written word of God to allow the blessings to flow in their lives. Now, I, I release the healing anointing into your life right now in the name of Jesus. If you need a healing in your body, and there's somebody that you're having, you're having some lower back problems. Uh, it, it, I, what I'm sensing is on the right side mainly is what I'm getting. Right there in the name of Jesus, I command the healing to flow into your back in Jesus' name. Those muscles to be loosened, to be relaxed, everything to come back into place in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Father, I pray for provision for every person that's watching, watching or listening to this program. Father, abundant provision. You want your people blessed. But Father, I ask you, and I declare and release the anointing for increase into your life right now. In Jesus' name, receive it by faith. Amen. Amen. Praise God. One last thing I want to uh, allow you to do. Uh, to I'm, I'm, What I want to do is give you the opportunity to participate in this ministry. We're reaching somewhere in the neighborhood. We don't have an accurate count at this point. But somewhere in the neighborhood of 40,000 homes a week with our ministry. But we're reaching more uh, as well as that online, we're reaching more people through the seeds we sow into other ministries. We give to ministries that feed the hungry, minister to people in prison, minister to people on the street, do evangelistic work, uh, people that are teachers of the word like I am, uh, that go and, and people that are missionaries, do missionary work, going overseas, ministering in other countries, people that are uh, ministering uh, through uh, law. Uh, they're attorneys and they're believers and God's using them to help people uh, with legal things. Uh, ministries that, uh, that you know, they, they develop teaching like, like Bible schools and so forth. So we're ministering to other ministries. Uh, and as you give into this ministry, we take that first tenth and we then divide it among six ministries that we support. So if our ministry is um, being is under attack financially, then we don't have that much ability to help those other ministries to support the things that God has put in our hearts to support. These other ministries we support are doing things we're not called to do. We don't have the anointing to do those things. And so we support those ministries that do. So when you give into this ministry, you're making an investment. You're making an investment in seven ministries, us plus six others we support. You're making an investment in thousands of people's lives, uh, if, if through nothing else, than what we do. Uh, like I said, 40,000 home views per week. We don't know how many actual physical numbers of people that represents. It could be three times that. It could be four or five. We don't know. All we know is how many homes we're reaching. You're a part of that if you support this ministry. And so I want you to pray about it. Uh, there's two ways to give. You can give, you know, as you feel impressed to give, when you feel impressed to give. And, and we appreciate those who give one time or, or sporadically. We appreciate it. We don't look down on that at all. Uh, but it's the partners that help us to consistently be able to do what God's called us to do because we can count on their giving. So we want you to pray about not only supporting this ministry, but becoming a partner with us. And as a partner, there's three things that we ask of you and uh, for us. One is, as a partner, you're going to pray for us on a daily basis. We commit to praying for our partners every day. 
The second thing is when we have a faith project, something we're believing for, that you will join your faith to ours. If one can put a thousand flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. We increase our potential power of faith when we agree, we set ourselves in agreement. So we ask you as a partner to do that. And then the third thing is that you make a commitment to support this ministry on a monthly basis. When we have that happening, we can then be able to establish a budget, know what we've got to work with, know when we've got maybe some excess funds to uh, reach out and expand what we're doing. So pray about becoming a partner. And uh, again, you can, if you feel impressed to give something today, then by all means do that. But it, pray about partnership. Because what happens is, whatever credit we get for what we accomplish through ministry, you get the same credit for it. And Jesus made this statement. He said, whatever you give for the gospel's sake. Well, our message is the gospel. It's the good news that Jesus brought to us. When you give for the gospel's sake, Jesus said that you'll receive back in this lifetime as much as a hundred times, as much as, as you've given. In another scripture, Luke 6, 38, it says, give and it shall be given back to you. How? Huh? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. You want to get God to speak into people about you and blessing you? Start sowing seed. When you give is when God then can get involved with bringing a harvest back to you. There's one scripture, one translation says, your harvest in life depends entirely on the seed you sow. So if you don't like the harvest you're getting, you need to start sowing some seed or maybe increase your giving. I don't know what you're doing. So you got to make that decision. But pray about becoming a partner with us. Pray about supporting this ministry so that we can do not only what we're called to do, but we can help others that are called in various ministries to do what they're called to do. Thank you so much and ahead of time. I'm going to pray over this. Just This is just like we do Sunday morning in our church. And I, I want you to listen and feel in your spirit, man. What do you feel impressed to do? And then respond to that. And then a few minutes after I'm done praying, I'm going to give you the information on how you can sow your seed into this ministry. Father, I thank you for every person that hears this message. And it doesn't matter when they hear it. Father, I thank you that when they hear it, the anointing of the word that I've given today will go forth into their lives and make a change and begin to cause blessing to come into their lives. And Father, as we receive our tithes and offerings, I ask you to speak to the people hearing this. Put it in their hearts. Let them know what their part is, what they should do. And Father, I believe that as they respond and they give and sow that seed in this ministry, that they are truly making a spiritual investment. But Father, we also know there's a natural investment taking place, that we're sowing seed that will also cause that the finances we give to come back multiplied. So Father, I agree with them as they give into this ministry, that it will be multiplied supernaturally back into their hands. Father, and I thank you for those that decide to partner with us, Father, and we will commit and have committed to bless them uh, through prayers and faith and agree with them and make ourselves avail available, Father, for ministry. So, Father, bless them, and we receive those tithes or offerings, whatever you impress upon them to do regarding sowing seed into this ministry. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the wisdom to know how to handle the finances, to know what to do and how to do it, when to do it, so that we are wise stewards of what you put in our hands. And Father, we ask this all in the name of Jesus. We consider it done now. Amen. All right. Listen, y'all have a blessed day. Y'all, here I am in Oklahoma. And gone to the y'all thing. Anyway, have a blessed day. We'll be back Tuesday night with our Tuesday night live Bible study. And uh, it's one hour Bible study. You ought to, you ought to tune in. And then uh, Thursday's Word, which is a 20-minute exhortation. Join us for those, uh, all three services this week. And with that, I say once again, be blessed. We'll see you then.